And the thing that I remember was you documented when the last tiger was killed in Korea. Annyeonghaseyo, this is Mark Peters with the Frog Outside the Well Research Center. And today I have a new guest for you to meet, an old friend, a former student, who is now a professor at the University of Virginia. Okay. This is Joseph Seeley. Yeah, he's teaching now at the University of Virginia, teaching Korean. You have to do other things too, East Asia. Yes, true. Yeah, the whole Korea, part. Japan, China, yeah. Yeah, a lot of Korea. So yeah. I teach about modern Korea, it's about late 1800s to now. I teach about pre-modern Korea, way back. Oh, you do? Uh -huh. You're really a specialist in the more modern era. Yes, my research is mainly about that, but I teach you all periods. Well, we all have to do it all. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, but you have to do a little China, a little Japan as well? Yes. Yep. I did too, starting out, but as the thing evolved, we got more Korean specialists. Mm -hmm. I ended up in my career with just all Korea, mm -hmm. so maybe you can develop a Korean <laughs> study center. Where, We're working on it. We're working on it. Where everything you do is yeah. uh, Korea day, night, and, and always. How many students do you have? You have a good enrollment there? Yeah, absolutely. When I teach modern Korean history, my biggest class usually have about 60 students. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah, very large class. Yeah. University of Virginia, Thomas Jefferson. Great, <laughs> great place. Absolutely great place. You know, I thought it would be interesting for my audience to know about your undergraduate thesis. He wrote yes. one of the best undergraduate theses we've seen at BYU, and it was on tigers, tigers Korean yes. tigers. And the thing that I remember was you documented when the last tiger was killed in Korea, and you've talked about the killing of tigers and all sorts. Tell me about it. Tell me about yes, that. Paper. Tigers. Chae Nam Sun, who some of our yeah, you know audience Nam -san. might oh, yeah. know, right? Um, famous Korean intellectual writer. In the 20s he and called, 30s. Yes, in the 1920s, 30s. He called Korea Hodam, a, a country of tiger tail. Oh, ho like korangi and dam, dam of like tail. tail and then book like country. Oh, because there's so many tigers yes. in the stories. In the stories and the folklore. And I, I found this when I first, so I first went to Korea as a missionary. I was there in 2009 and 10. I'm in the Busan area. And you know, you saw tigers in lots of different places. You heard about them in the stories and the sokdam, yeah, right? In the yeah. idioms, the old tales. And, and uh, you've got the map of Korea it looks right. like a tiger. Yes. So tigers are all over in Korean culture. They're all over in Korean culture. But where are the wild tigers? Yeah. I mean, the actual living, breathing animals, yeah. right? You have to go to the zoo or somewhere. There's no yeah. wild tigers in Korea. Did I tell you about the tiger I found in my dissertation? Oh, is this the, the woman? Where yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, uh, Lady, Lady Ho. This is in the dead. Shilok. And they're yeah. walking across a, the paddy dike, yeah. heading to the home. And the tiger yeah. jumps out and grabs the old man. And she grabs the tiger and says, take me, not him, yes. take me, not him, and is pounding on the tiger. I remember this. And and, and the tiger lets him go and runs <laughs> off. And it's in the Shilok as yeah. if it's a true story, you know. Maybe. Maybe somebody made it yeah. up, but, you know, there's enough veracity about it. Yeah. And that's the thing is there's lots of these types of stories in Korea historically. And they reflect the fact that there used to be a lot tigers. of wild tigers in Korea. Yeah. That people actually had encounters with them. Yeah. But no more. And so my, my essay, the thesis I wrote as a BYU undergrad, was trying to explore how we get from all these tiger tales and living tigers to the Korea of today, where you have tigers are still everywhere. I mean, I have this soccer jersey <laughs> right here, this old soccer jersey. It's got the tiger on it, right? So hey. tigers are the symbol of Korea. Hey, but... I just came back from Korea. I haven't even worn this shirt. I was given this as a yeah. gift. So there's the Korea right, tiger. Right, right. So it says Korea right here, tiger. No other explanation needed. That's no other explanation needed. Yeah. That's perfect. Yep, that's the so tiger. So the tiger is the symbol of Korea, yeah. right? It's like a, sort of the bald eagle, like yeah. is the symbol of the United States. The tiger has become a more or less symbol of Korea. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but there's no wild tiger. So my thesis was trying to explore this history of Korean interactions with the tigers, both culturally and in the sort of flesh and blood with actual these encounters with wild tigers. What I found is where symbolically the culturally the tiger has always been really important but when it came to actual sort of animal to animal interactions between tigers and humans those encounters didn't often end well well sometimes didn't end well for the human oh. but often didn't end well for the tiger oh and you know you had different you know tigers were valuable for fur so there's lots of reasons to hunt them plus tigers were also seen as really dangerous yeah. and harmful to animals, yeah. livestock, cows, yeah, they were to people. Yeah. Yeah. And so the last royal dynasty, the Chosun dynasty, actually commissioned, they were called Chakokapsa. 
tiger hunting soldiers. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen those in the census. When I've studied yeah. census documents. Oh, interesting. One of the occupations I've seen is tiger hunter. Yeah. And I thought, really? <laughs> there was enough tigers that there, really there was, was a whole yeah. occupation. So the Chosen Dynasty kind of encouraged the actual hunting of tigers. And by the time we get to the early 1900s, when Japan invades and colonizes Korea, Japanese colonial government basically does much of the same. It encourages the eradication of tigers. Mm -hmm. And so that's the point we get to 1924. It's the last record we have of any wild tigers oh. in South Korea, what's now South Korea, 1924. After that, doesn't seem to be any tigers anymore. Nor is it in Korea, it's harder to say. Yeah. We have stories of tigers in North Korea clear up till the 60s, 70s. And even today, maybe on the border with China, with Mount Bektu, there might, there be, might, a, still be, some. There might be a wild oh. tiger or two that comes down. What about leopards? Did you ever run into oh. leopards? <laughs> Yeah, so leopards, historically there were more leopards than tigers because leopards are oh. slightly smaller. So the sort of environment can sustain a slightly larger population of leopards than it can tigers. And what's interesting is that Koreans historically didn't always, you know, differentiate between leopards and tigers. Oh, These and, terms, and thus they're both called pom. They're both pom, right? They're both oh. pom. Or the hanja ho, yeah. like korangi ho, is sometimes used to describe both leopards oh. and tigers. What's the other word for leopard? Um, pyo, like pyo bam. Oh, oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'm confused. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I, so nowadays, you know, in Korea, there's a very clear idea. Okay, horangi means panthera tigris. It means an English tiger. <laughs> and pyo bam is leopard. Yeah. But historically, you know, there was big them. cats. were thrown. So you see this big in cat. Korean art too, where you'll see old Korean paintings mm. and the tiger has stripes and then it has spots too, and you know, oh, like, yeah. because there wasn't always a sort of careful... And their yeah. skins were very valuable. Yes. They were not only on the chair that the old man is sitting mm -hmm. on for his portrait, but they're also sent off to China as part Absolutely. of the tribute trade. Yes. Yes. It was high on the tribute trade mm -hmm. request mm -hmm. list, wasn't it? So if, if you're, let's say you live in northern Korea, where there was a lot of tigers historically, and you captured a wild tiger, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to turn that wild tiger's skin over to um, the county official, county magistrate, who would send it to Seoul, to Hanzang, so that it could be used by the royal government how it wishes usually during the, some form of the tributary trade yeah. or in exchange with Japan or things like that. You weren't supposed, to, there wasn't supposed to be a sort of private trade. But there was. But there was. Absolutely. There, there <laughs> always is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, yeah, you can never look at a law and say, well, that's what they did, because yeah. you know yeah. if there's a law, yeah. that's often what they didn't yes. do. Yeah. So so there was a uh, illicit trade yes. in tiger skins as yes. well. Absolutely. And well, tiger bones were also really valuable oh, oh, for traditional oh, medicine. Oh, grind me up a tiger bone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah so. for sure. Joseph, thanks for coming in today yeah, and sharing these yeah, interesting yeah, tales yeah. From, from years ago, from when you were an undergraduate. <laughs> yeah. But it was a great uh, undergraduate thesis. Which so. became an article, which you can check out. Oh, where? Yeah, in the journal Environmental History. Environmental History. Yes. Oh, at a time yes. before environmentalism was very important. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, thanks for coming yeah, in. No, and we'll see you all next time. Yeah. Uh, bye. Okay.